Good evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I'm Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church, and this evening we will have a worship service together, singing praises to the Lord, observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that I hope will be beneficial to all of us. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise, and I will give you the number and the name of the song, just in case you don't have that book and you have another one available to you, that you might be able to sing along with us. The first song that we will sing this evening in our book is number 136. 136. It is entitled, Love for All. Love for All. Love for all, and can it be? Can I hope it is for me? I who strayed so long ago, strayed so far and fell so low. I, the disobedient child, wayward passionate and wild, I, who left my father's home in forbidden ways to roam, to my father can I go, at his feet myself I'll throw. In his house there yet may be place a servant's place for me. See my father waiting stands. See he reaches out his hands. God is love, I know, I see. Love for and even me. Number 736, <coughs> to Christ be true. 736, to Christ be true. To Christ be loyal and be true, his banner be unfurled. And born of till secured the conquest of the world. To Christ the Lord be true. For he will go with you and help you on your conflicts through to Christ the Lord be true. To Christ be loyal and be true. He needs brave volunteers. To stand against the powers of sin, move not by frowns or fears. To Christ the Lord be true, for he will go with you and help you all your conflicts through to Christ. The Lord be true. 
To Christ be loyal and be true, in noble service prove. Your faith and your fidelity, the fervor of your love. To Christ the Lord be true, for he will go with you and help you all your conflicts through to Christ the Lord be true. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number three, 35 in memory of the Savior's love. 335 in memory of the Savior's love. In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast where every humble contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath this banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of Every first day of the week as we gather together, one of the things that we are to observe is the memorial that Jesus set up on the night in which he was betrayed. That memorial was designed for us to remember his crucifixion, to remember his suffering, and to remember as he sacrificed himself for us, what a wonderful and pure sacrifice it was. He let us know that there was a new covenant. There was a new covenant in which um, animals and so forth would not be sacrificed the way they once were because he would be the one-time sacrifice for all because Jesus left the right hand of God. He came down to earth in human form. He experienced everything that humans could experience, yet did not lose his deity. And with that in mind, let's remember him on the cross. Let's remember that human on the cross who suffered, uh, who uh, physically suffered and had his blood poured out from him. Uh, the blood of our salvation. And so with that in mind, let's remember this memorial that we are to uh, partake of each Lord's Day when we meet together. Let's pray for the bread. We are indeed cognizant that in your divine wisdom, dear God, you sent Jesus to us knowing that he would suffer uh, the torment and the death of a cruel, cruel uh, punishment, that being hung on the cross, that of being crucified. As we partake of the bread, let's remember the agony that Jesus was in, that he suffered that for each one of us, that we might come to understand uh, what he was truly about in his life. Bless us as we partake of this bread. We pray it in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. Following the bread, 
signifying his body. We now partake of the cup, the blood of his salvation. And let's just hearken back to that day on the cross when Jesus's life uh, just ebbed away as the blood flowed from it. Help us to understand the significance that it is the blood of our salvation. It is the blood that cleanses our sins. Help us to keep that on our hearts as we partake. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper having been completed, we take this opportunity to do also what we were supposed to do on the first day of the week. And that is take an assessment of how we have been blessed and then give back to the Lord according to how the Lord has prospered us. In giving, we uh, sacrifice. That's to me how giving is connected to the Lord's Supper. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. We're supposed to sacrifice some of our physical means so that uh, Jesus' kingdom that he died for uh, can exist here on earth, the church. And the church can go about on its mission, that it can go about uh, bringing others to the Lord and spreading the word, that it can go about uh, being a vehicle for helping those that may be in need. So as we give, help us to remember all that and help us to give with both an open heart and with a cheerful heart. Let's pray. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, in our giving. Help us indeed to understand that this is a part of our service to you, giving you back what was yours anyway, but giving back just in reality, knowing that uh, the church today uh, cannot operate without physical funds uh, that help it to, to do what it's supposed to do here on earth. Bless those that utilize this money, that it will go to furthering your word here on earth. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn to number 993, we'll sing it through twice. The title of this song is What a Mighty God We Serve. 993, we'll sing it twice. <clears throat> what a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. The singing portion and the praise portion in the Lord's Supper part of our worship service is uh, now completed. And I have a message, uh, hopefully for each of you, that will be beneficial. And uh, hopefully we'll um, lift our hearts a little bit and cause us to think just a little bit. You may have heard the, the tint of the songs, especially the last one, What a Mighty God We Serve. Every one of the songs that we sang had the term service in them. As we have been doing a, a series of lessons entitled The Way of Christ, this evening I would like to zero in on The Way of Christ, The Way of Service. Now, so far... Uh, we have talked about the way uh, to God, to life, to truth, to love, to joy, to peace, to unity, to prayer, to forgiveness. This week, we are going to talk about service. The way of Christ 
is also the way of service. Perhaps the most poignant and truthful scripture that Jesus uh, explained to us when it came to service is in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. And in that verse, Jesus said, I did not come in this world to be served, but to serve. Now, you know what? That puts all of the onus on service on us because we are supposed to be Christ-like in our lives. And if Jesus came to serve, part of our Christian makeup, part of our Christian DNA ought to be about serving others. In Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8, it talks about Jesus lowering himself and becoming a bond servant. Now, if you remember, bond servants had to serve, right? They had to serve. And it's almost as if uh, the Apostle Paul, in these Holy Spirit-inspired words, is saying to us as Christians that we are bond servants. That means we are bound to serve with Jesus as our example, not coming to be served, but to serve. And so with that, uh, let's look at some of the words of Jesus and understand that Jesus teaches us to be servants. And in Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28, he said that uh, true discipleship, uh, true greatness revolves around our service. And I found it so interesting that Jesus set the bar for his disciples in John 13, verses 12 to 17, in that when they were gathered around, Jesus went around and started washing their feet. We are to wash the feet of others, not literally, but spiritually. Washing feet is humbling ourselves in service. And why do we do that? Because we want to be great in the kingdom of God. Service leads to greatness, but also it leads to happiness. As Jesus said, blessed are you if you do them, if you do the things that I came to earth to do. If you follow my example of service in your life. And so when Jesus was physically gone, we come to the book of Acts and we come to the apostolic teachings. And with that, the chain of service never really changed. The chain of service, if anything, grew stronger. Uh, we, we have a liberty and a free will in Jesus Christ, but that free will revolves around how we serve one another. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13, uh, Paul writes, we are to love one another and serve one another. Now, take that apart. We're all bright people. The Apostle Paul, gifted through the Holy Spirit, wrote, if we love one another, then we will have the desire to serve one another. And we are to use our gifts, the gifts that we have, to be the humble bond servants that we are supposed to be. 
Peter in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 says that uh, we should use the gifts that we have to minister to one another. Why? Because when we minister to one another, when we serve one another, I truly believe that God is glorified. In 1 Peter 4, verses 9 and 10, Peter says for us to be hospitable. When we are hospitable to one another, we serve one another. Service is a part of that hospitality. Service leads to glorifying God. And it is amazing that with our hands and our feet and our intellect, God gives us the tools with which to serve. That being said, how might we serve those around us? Well, I would uh, propose to you that the way of service is actually manifested. We are to serve the kingdom of God through desiring that others come to the uh, understanding that Jesus Christ is indeed um, the Son of God. And if we hope to live eternally with him, that we have to be in service to him. You know what? Somebody had an influence on each one of us to come to Jesus Christ. Um, again, Jesus set the bar. When he was teaching, some heard him. And they started to follow him. They even went to the point when they went and they called their brothers and they said, we have found the Messiah. What were they doing? Well, what they were doing was they wanted others to know about Jesus Christ. This is how Jesus came to have 12 disciples. And it, it begins with being hospitable. It, it begins with a life of service and kindness. You know, at the least, we can invite a friend to our worship service. We can offer uh, what we know about the Lord's word to them. We can hone our skills of evangelism. And the only way that we can do that is to learn more of God's word. And then, there's the idea of edification. And by that, I mean building up the body of Christ. Uh, can't you think of those in your life that have helped you along the way? That have helped in your spiritual growth? In our church, we have Bible classes. We have teachers that spend time in preparing for these Bible classes. Why do they do that? For self-glory? No. They want to help us learn the, the Lord's Holy Spirit-inspired word. Why? Because these teachers are interested in the spiritual growth of those who teach. Having been in education all of my life, part of my teaching involved my students growing, growing in what I could uh, display to them as their teacher. You know, at, 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 at services, as far as worship service, you know, we can't greet people and serve them if we're not there. If, if we just bolt out the back door when services are over, how can we encourage one another? As Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 lets us know. It just means that we have this chance 
within the Lord's kingdom here on earth is church. The volunteer for many, many things. You know, the church is a body. Paul explained that in, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, that all of these parts of our body are kind of knitted together in a special way. And the, the body, in order to do and function the way it's supposed to, is to have all of these parts working. So it is within our church. All of our members need to be working for the glory of God. And then there's the idea of benevolence, meeting the needs of those in Christ. Has anyone ever shown you kindness? Brothers and sisters, kindness is spiritual. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says to be kind to one another. How do we do that? Help others in their walk. Visit those that are sick. If we can't physically visit, call. In today's modern era, text. We used to write notes to people. Uh, we don't do that anymore. Render service to one another, whatever it might be. Whatever, uh, you know, it might be transporting them somewhere where they're not able to go. Maybe uh, going to the store for them if they're not able to go. Ministering to the poor and to the hungry and the needy. There are many ways to serve in the vineyard of the, war, of the Lord. You know, we set the bar as members of the Lord's church by how we conduct ourselves personally. For example, in homes, if you're in a marriage relationship, it's husbands and wives serving one another. Children and parents serving one another. Even siblings coming to understand one another's needs. When we're able to do that in the home, this can carry over certainly into the church. In the workplace, if you are in a workplace, are you good at your job? Do you go out of your way to do as as well as you possibly can? As managers or laborers serving one another? Employees serving one another? We set the example in the community. As Christians, we can be a viable part of a community in serving one another. You know, communities uh, very often have the funds to help one another, and we can get involved in that. It's almost like friend and foe serving one another. It's amazing when we're able to be those foot washers that Jesus was, to humble ourselves, to make our service a priority in our lives to take it into our lives to the point where we actually are bond servants. See, when we're bond servants, this tells us that we almost within ourselves say, I have to serve. I have to serve. Because Jesus let us know that. Now, the way of Christ may at times seem counterintuitive. But Jesus, again, in his uh, wonderful divine words, in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 26 said, whoever desires to be great among you, let him be your servant. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, two verses later, he says, Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. So what does the way of service lead to? Well, I would propose that the way of service leads to uh, love and respect in others. 
In Matthew chapter 23, verses 11 and 12, he says, the greatest among you shall be your servants. And then he, he puts it in stark contrast. He says, the person who exalts himself will be one day humbled. And that person who is humbled will be exalted by God. And our journey along, and as we go back to uh, what all of these lessons are all about, the way of Christ, let's follow the way of service. Remembering the words of Jesus that I will finish this lesson with from Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. It ought to be stamped on our hearts. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to be served. He did not come to be served, but to serve. He served ultimately by giving his life as a ransom for our sins. When Jesus died on the cross, that was his service to you and I. He served us as our great high priest, as our great sacrifice, so that we might come to the Lord and know God. Do you know God? Do you know uh, God through Jesus Christ? Have we come to the Lord and become his children? Have you obeyed the Lord unto salvation? We've talked about the Holy Spirit-inspired word this evening. And we revolve the lesson around service to one another. Christians serve one another. It's important for us to be children of God. To do that, you must confess Jesus as the Son of God, repent of your former ways, and be baptized unto him for the remission of your sins. If you haven't done that, and you know that is part of your service, if you want to live eternally with the Lord, we ask you to respond. If you want to do that this evening, get in touch with one of us. We will be there to help you. Let's close with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, help us on our Christian walk to be your humble servants. Help us to understand that the way to you is, is through our service to others. Help us in this close-knit community of the church, that the church might be a vehicle for service to the workplace, to the community, to the family, that we might be your bond servants in life. There's so many that uh, want our prayers. Help us to pray for others. That is indeed a part of our Christian service also, to pray for one another. Continue to be with us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us as you have comforted us to comfort others. Comfort is a part of your service to us and could be part of our service to those around us. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. I pray this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Please be safe. And may God bless you all. Oh.